What's up YouTube? For the next few sewing videos, I'm going to show you how I make this scrappy shirt quilt. This quilt, when finished, will be about 54 inches wide by 72 inches long. And for me, that's the perfect size throw. I'm a pretty big guy, and some of the quilt patterns that I get just aren't long enough for me. There's nothing I hate worse than my feet sticking out when I'm trying to cuddle up on the couch. To make this scrappy shirt quilt, we're going to need 48 blocks. Each of those blocks is going to measure 9.5 inches by 9.5 inches. I'm also going to use about 8 yards of Pellon. I'm using the featherweight, 2.5 yards of fleece for the backing, and I haven't decided what I want to use my batting for. If I can find an old flannel sheet, I'll use that. Otherwise, I'm just going to use a regular old sheet. I don't want this quilt when finished to be really thick and heavy, I just want a nice throw for the couch. So I'm definitely not going to use batting. So I'll show you what you're going to need, and let's get started! Alright guys, so in this first video we're just going to focus on the quilt top. The most fun part. So the things you're going to need are... Some button-up shirts. Now if you watch my denim quilt video, a lot of this fabric will look familiar. I use the backs of these shirts to do the back of that quilt. So I'm just going to use up what I have here. But this is a perfect project to go through your hubby's clothes, your clothes, your kid's clothes, and just grab a bunch of different button-up shirts. How many you need will depend on the size of the shirts and how many squares you can get out of each shirt. I have two tubs full of these shirts, so I'll have plenty of fabric to work with. You're also going to need some fusible Pellon. Today I'll be using the 911FF fusible featherweight, but you could use any weight that you want. Like I said, I'm not going to be using cotton batting for this quilt, so I want my squares to have a little bit of structure and a little bit of weight. You're also going to need your iron and ironing board, a pressing cloth, and your sewing machine with thread. Alright guys, so the first thing that I'm going to do is go ahead and cut out 48 of my squares. I just happen to have this 9.5 inch square ruler, so it's perfect for this project. So now you're just using a rotary cutter with a sharp blade, go ahead and cut out your square. Just like that. Now this shirt also has plenty of fabric around here and it's far enough away from the placket that I could also cut out this pocket if I wanted to and use it as an accent square. And I just might go ahead and do that. Just like that. Now this will put a little dimension into your quilt and people will also know that it's recycled, upcycled, and made from shirts. I like that. And don't forget to get your buttons off here when you're done. I have a huge jar here full of buttons that maybe someday I'll use. Alright guys, so I have my squares all cut out here and I have way more than 48 here so I'll have plenty to choose from. The next thing that you're going to want to do is go ahead and cut all your Pellon out to nine and a half inch squares also, and I've already done that right here. Now you just want to take your square of fabric here. You want to put it so it's pretty side facing down. You want to take a piece of your Pellon here, and if you've never used Pellon before, it has a bumpy side, which is the glue, and a soft side. We want to put the glue side down. Just like that. And following the directions on the paper that comes with your Pellon, 
you want to iron this on. For this kind, it says, with an iron set on wool steam, press firmly in place for a full 10 seconds, repeat lifting and slightly overlapping iron until all interfacing is fused down. You also want to use a pressing cloth. I just use a piece of fabric here that I've used and it's pretty dirty, but it helps. If you don't, you might end up with something like this. I make these mistakes for you people. So now you just want to cover your square here with your pressing cloth. And I like to just start right down here, work my way over, up, and back over. I'm going to place my hot iron on the corner here. I'm going to count to 10 and then move the iron over. Now I usually do four sections on the bottom and four sections on the top. When I've done all the sections, I then just like to go over it one more time, just like this, making sure that pellon is good and fused down. You can kind of tell if your pellon's not glued down. You'll be able to see the little glue bubbles through the fabric here. So if I can still see a few here, I'll just put my cloth right back on there and go over that spot again. Just like that. Now as you can see, sometimes your squares will get a little wonky. That's just fine. When you sew these together, just make sure you follow the straight line on the pellon. Now I'll just set this off to the side, and I have 47 more to go. Alright guys, so I have my stack of squares here. And I also have a small stack of accent squares. And that consists of pockets, labels, and anything like that that was on the shirt that will just add a little bit of interest to this quilt. So this quilt is going to have eight rows with six in each row. All right, guys, now that I have this all laid out, I'm going to go ahead and add my accent pieces. And like I said, this consists of labels and pockets. I might use all of them, and I just might use a couple. I'll see. All right guys, so I'm all finished here and I'm pretty happy with the placement. I use six accent blocks, so there's either a logo or a pocket in each of the vertical rows. And I just think it adds great character to this scrappy quilt. So the next thing we're gonna do is I'm going to lay these into piles. Starting up here at the top, I'm gonna start with this one, put it on top of this next one, and I'm going to keep doing that until all eight rows are stacked together. All right, guys, so the next thing I'm going to do is label my stacks here. I took some scratch paper and I numbered them one through eight, just like this. And I also put these arrows on here. All the odd numbers, I'm going to press my seams to the right. And all the even numbers, I'm going to press my seams to the left. All right, guys, so I have my first stack of eight here. So I'm going to remove the wonder clip and I'm going to pin the tag on the left side of my first block here. Just like that. And that way I know that every block will go to the right of this tag. So I'm going to lay my first block here face up. The block right under that, which you can see is getting kind of shaggy, I'm going to put that face down, matching it up as best I can. And with a quarter inch seam allowance, I'm just going to sew a seam right down this edge here. Just like that. Now I'm going to open it up, grab my next block, I'm going to line it up over this blue block,
and so a quarter inch seam allowance. Now you guessed it, open it up, grab your next block, put them right sides together, and sew a quarter inch seam allowance. Now I'm going to continue to do that until all six of my blocks are sewed together for this row, and then I'll take it over to my pressing board and I'll press all my seams in the same direction. All right, guys, so I have all eight of my rows sewed together. So the next thing I'm going to do is sew my rows together. So I'm going to start with rows one and two. I'm going to sew those together. Then I'm going to sew together three and four, five and six, seven and eight. After I got those all sewed together, then I'll sew together one to three, five to seven, and so on and so on until I get all rows sewed together. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to start with these two right here. I'm going to lay number one over number two. And I'm going to put a pin in every single seam. Because I pressed my seams to opposite sides here, they'll nestle together perfectly. You're also going to want to put a pin in the beginning and the end. If these do happen to be a little wonky, the good things about using these shirts are is there's some stretch. So go ahead and stretch these bad boys into place. All right, guys, so I have this all pinned together. The next thing I'm going to do is go ahead and take this over to my sewing machine. And with a quarter inch seam allowance, I'm going to sew this seam all the way down. Now, when I'm sewing my rows together, I like to backstitch at the beginning and the end. I don't do it so much here when I'm sewing the blocks to the blocks, but the weight of the quilt when you're moving it around can sometimes make these seams come undone. All right guys, so like I said, with a quarter inch seam allowance, I'm gonna go ahead and sew this seam all the way down the row, back stitching at the beginning and the end. When you get to your seams here, just make sure that they're still going the opposite direction. Sometimes the one on the bottom likes to flip over. And just keep sewing. Just like that. Now I'm going to take this over to my ironing board and I'm going to press this seam to one side. It doesn't really matter which side you want to press it to at this stage. And I'm going to do the same thing until the whole quilt top is sewed together and I'll show you what it looks like. Alright guys, now I have this quilt top all sewed together. And I think it turned out great. Like I said, this is the perfect throw size for me anyway and it's perfect for a kid quilt too. In the next videos, I'll show you how to layer these together and how to do the binding. I hope you give this project a try. If you like this video and want to see more of my videos, go down below and hit the big red subscribe button and give this video a big thumbs up. If you have a question about this video or any of my other videos, or would just like to leave a suggestion for a future upcoming video, leave me a comment. Feel free to share this video across your social medias. And as always, thanks for watching. I'll see you next time.